We've achieved everything we want to do. We have a beautiful available function to us on our relevant data. We can do this on user two, user three, user 1000. But man, look how much our new keyword handled for us. Look how tight and uh, tidy our code is. No more making that object by hand. Oh, one little thing to add. So what is basically passed into object.create here by new? User-creator.prototype. User-creator.prototype, that object, exactly. That object of shared functions, we want each of these objects that gets returned from calling user-creator uh, user to have access to. Now, know one thing. If I ran user-creator without the new keyword, do I automatically create a this empty object? In, no, right? Without the new keyword, the this.name and this.score, what's the this going to refer to? JavaScript never needs anything unevaluated. Uh, unevaluatable. It's going to point somewhere. Skyler? The global memory. This, uh, not global memory quite, Mijin? Uh, to the global object. This global object known as the window in the browser, which is a collection of features and functions of JavaScript. But it is definitely not what we want to have the name and score property set on. So this is a, uh, just a, to reiterate, every uh, JavaScript's runtime, that means the space in which it's running, has a built-in object full of a bunch of properties of JavaScript called the window, and in Node it's called the global object. When I call a function, just a regular function, like user creator, with no new keyword, and, no, it's, and that function's not being called as a method on an object, user creator's not being called as a method on an object, it still has a value for this inside the local memory. But that this is, uh, is bound, this is what we do use the word bound, is bound to that random global object, which is of no use at all. And this has been a very big frustration for people when using JavaScript. And in a way, I do think it's a flawed feature that I need to second guess that the user creator function requires a new keyword. Often inside of a, a user creator function or a quiz question creator function or whatever, I'll actually have a whole bunch of new functions defined and my, my first reference to this will be way down. And I'll think I can run the function just good to go, see what happens. And all sorts of crazy stuff will happen because the this is being bound to global objects. So, hmm, regret, anyway. Um, <laughs> So, what do we do to ensure we know that that user creator function must be run with the new keyword in front of it, Philip? We capitalize yeah. the first letter of the function. This is a flawed design feature that we have to personally come in and capitalize so that I know to run this function that it will not work remotely as I've designed it to work because of all, if I don't have the new keyword. Because look how much I was relying on the new keyword to make it work. That's a flawed design feature. So we step in as JavaScript developers and would run user creator, we define it with a capital U at the front. And therefore we all as developers have developed a sort of standard that we know that's gonna require the new keyword in front of it. Okay, folks, thumbs on this, our third solution. We have one more solution that's gonna prettify it even more since ES6 came along. But in our third solution, thumbs on this model, you lost me, I'm clear, I have clarifications. Everyone's thumbs out? All right, we are all clear. What do we think of this model? Benefits, fast to write, I had to write less stuff, look how much JavaScript came in and helped me. Still typical practice in professional code. This is still increasingly not the standard. We're gonna see solution four is increasingly the best practice, but you'll still see plenty of code written in this style. You will never see solution two written. And yet, knowing that solution two is what gives us solution three is why you all will have the depth of understanding to, in interviews, answer that key question. What is the new keyword doing under the hood? And even, can you build the new keyword from scratch for me? Because you have every damn piece that goes into the new keyword, because you build it from scratch yourself in solution two with object.create. All right, so downside of it, 99% of developers have no idea how it works and therefore fail interviews. All right, our final, final solution four takes all this and says, ah, Still, this is not similar enough to, tradi to traditional object-oriented languages. We still need some way. In the traditional object-oriented languages, 
we are right now, what do we do? We did user created dot prototype dot increment is a function. User created dot prototype dot login is a function. We hand, we hand uh, stored them. We saw them by hand. We stored them in this prototype object by hand. In other languages, functions that are shared between all returned objects are not stored by hand separately. Let's just uh, make sure we have our user2. What would our user2? Well, let's do our standard one, which is name, Tim, score, uh, five. And that would also have a proto reference to user creator dot prototype. This guy here. OK. Uh, we are here writing our shared methods the methods that are available on all these objects, we're writing them in separately. What does that mean? Let's see. That means we stored them associated with user creator ready to be available on user one. We stored them manually. In other languages, you don't do that. We store them separately from our constructor. We, we define our, constru our function that constructs and returns objects, and then we separately store the functions on it in the prototype object. Super explicit still. At least we're still saying exactly where they're being stored. Well, that's still, unfortunately, too explicit. We want to hide even that. We want to make us think even more that under the hood, this works like a traditional, known as classical, object-oriented language, even though it fundamentally does not. And so, other languages let us do this all in one place. ES 2015, ES 6 lets us do that also in what's called the class syntactic sugar. The class syntactic sugar takes the function definition piece of user creator and calls it constructor. It's exactly the same functionality. You see this dot name equals name. It uh, calls it constructor as a sort of subtitle. And then it takes the functions that we manually stored, user creator dot prototype dot increment, and it allows us to just list them below. And then we wrap the whole thing in something called a class. And you can call this user creator, but you know, class user creator. And that's all that's changed. Let's go through this to make sure we're really, really clear on this, because it can be, I don't want to uh, hide the, it is really this simple. It really has nothing to change. Class user, well, we can think of this combination of these two parts. Class is technically a different data structure, data, data type in JavaScript, but for our benefit right now, we can think of this as being, as being our class. So we define the user creator class comprising its function version, the bit that when we call user creator, when we call user creator is going or call, we now call it user, call user is going to run the function version of it. But what subtitle does it give Philip the, the bit which we use to call the function version of user creator? Constructor. Constructor. That's a subtitle, but it is absolutely, when I call the user creator function, we're going to call it the user here, but the user creator function is going to grab that constructor subtitled bit and run that. Well, that's exactly the same as what I had in version 3. Call it user creator, and then we ran user creator, we we're running the function version of it. But we added to the object version of it these shared functions, a shared function store. Well, here, we don't even have to manually do that, but know they're going in exactly the same place. All functions that I list below this constructor function are all going to be added to the user created dot prototype shared function store. They're going to be at, when I write, when I added increment, when I wrote increment there, JavaScript is going to pass through this C increment. It, doesn't, uh, it literally takes each of these pieces as it defines it, not like later on, it, as it defines it, it goes, looks at increment, ah, grab increment and store it in user creator dot prototype, and there it is. And then it sees login and it's going to grab it and store it in user creator dot prototype dot login. And then when I run user creator, or you call it here user, when we run it with new, what are we doing? We're grabbing the constructor subtitled bit. The constructor subtitled bit. We grab it and we're going to run it just as before. Nothing has changed. This is why it's called essentially syntactic sugar. That's a word meaning a prettifying, but nothing under the hood has changed. Now, don't be wrong, class gives you a bunch of new features under the hood, but for our purposes here, nothing has changed. We now have an even cleaner version, and even less representative of what is happening under the hood. Ah, oh, well. Good. So, there's the function user. Constructor piece, 
replaced here. Here's the storing of increment and login. We just list them out. We don't even write the word function. We just literally list them out. No commas, just whoosh, throw them in. All right. So benefits, emerging absolutely as our new standard. Feels more like the style of our language. This is almost identical to Python. And I don't love this as like, you know, not, it, not owning the fact that JavaScript is a very powerfully prototypal language. All this stuff under the hood is using the proto-references. That's not how OOP is implemented in traditionally OOP languages, believe me. But I guess it makes it accessible, makes it feel similar. The downside is 99% of developers have no idea how this works, making it inherently challenging to debug it, to explain it, to talk it through to other developers. But you will not be one of those folk. Congratulations, guys. That is all of OOP in JavaScript. We're there. All right. Thank you.